Hey guys, welcome to Fortunately's two-part video series about the student loan debt issue. In this first part, we'll be talking about the origins of student loans, the history of student loan debt, and the consequences for borrowers. So, without further ado, let the show begin! Before we dive into the good stuff, we have a quick favour to ask. At the moment, Fortunately is a small channel that hopes to grow big and strong. And every like and share from you guys will help us get closer to this goal. If you find this video interesting and informative, please subscribe, since we're keen on making many more videos that explain finance in a fun way. It would mean the world to us. In 1904, Harvard President Charles W. Eliot wrote, I want to have the college open equally to men with much money, little money, or no money, provided they all have brains. More than a century later, Eliot's vision seems little more than a pipe dream. In the early 90s, the average student loan debt was $10,000. Today, that number has quadrupled. The average student now walks away from college with almost $40,000 in debt. There are around 45 million borrowers who collectively owe nearly $1.6 trillion, which makes student loan debt the largest debt category after mortgage debt. 70% of college graduates start their professional lives in the red, and 11% of total student loan debt is reported to be 90 plus days delinquent or in default. This is highest among medical students, with law students not far behind. Student loan debt is weighing upon young people who are just starting out in life. More and more graduates are postponing major life milestones while they struggle to pay it off. So how on earth did things get to be this grim? Let's get to the bottom of it. Student loan debt hasn't always been such an overwhelming issue. In fact, in the 19th century, college education used to be free and was considered an investment in improving society. So. What led us to the present student loan crisis? First of all, we should point out that when college education first became a thing, only a tiny percentage of the population studied. That meant that the cost of offering free education was pretty much negligible for the government. Here's a surprising fact to put that in context. Even between World War II and the 1970s, fewer than 50% of people graduated from high school and less than 10% of the population held a college degree. Even when private colleges started attracting upper-class students in the early 20th century, those students had very different motivations for studying. Many went for the social experience, not because they needed a job to put food on the table. Nowadays, things couldn't be more different. With college tuition prices going through the roof, it's easy to jump to the conclusion that the whole industry is simply greedy and fraudulent. But we must also consider that the world we live and work in is much more complicated than it was just a couple of decades ago. A worker in post-war America could find a cushy job with just their basic trade. That one salary could easily support an entire family, which was enough to keep most people satisfied. Back then, going to university was undoubtedly impressive, but it was by no means necessary. Nowadays, higher education is integral to finding a fulfilling job and earning a good living. How come? Well, believe it or not, it's all Sputnik's fault. After the satellite's launch, the US was afraid it was falling behind the Soviets, so President Eisenhower signed the National Defense Education Act. This was the first large-scale federal student loan program for higher education in the US. The objective of this act was to educate more people in science, technology and language, which were skills the government deemed necessary to defend the nation during the Cold War. As demand for higher education increased, so did its cost, and as a consequence, students took out bigger loans each year. The availability of student loans made it possible for colleges to raise prices without it affecting their enrolment numbers. With the influx of cash, they started making extravagant changes, such as building fancy dorms, classrooms, and even fitness centers. If you're a cynic, you might argue that colleges did this to justify their skyrocketing tuition fees. Fast forward to today, and it seems almost impossible to succeed without a college degree. 
This leads more and more students to get indebted and enter adulthood with financial baggage, which also creates intense competition for jobs. The crazy thing is that many graduates get stuck in a job they could have got without a college degree, and these jobs simply don't pay enough for them to get out of debt. There are many negative consequences of living with a seemingly impossible to get rid of student debt. Those who do so are often forced to put off major life events, like moving out of their parents' home, buying a house and having kids. Perhaps even worse is the effect stressing about debt can have on mental health. All this brings us to one question. Wouldn't it be better if this whole thing just disappeared? Shouldn't we just forgive student debt and let the entire nation finally breathe so that young people could work and live their lives without constant worry? It sounds like a no-brainer, but things aren't that easy. In fact, this matter is so complex that we're going to need to do a second video on it. Click the subscribe button if you haven't already, and see you next time.